Welcome to this brief tutorial about evaluating websites. In this video, we'll quickly cover the differences between .com sites, .org, .gov, .edu, and .net sites and blogs. Learn how to spot authoritative sites and how to spot less authoritative sites. An authoritative site has ethos, which is credibility. Today, we'll explore how to look for the credibility of the writer and or publisher of the site. You're seeking an authoritative site that may have an opinion or slant but is based in verifiable facts. Are the writer's sources credible? Remember that authoritative sites have credibility, which means they have ethos. After you've evaluated a site's credibility, then on your own, you'll need to determine if it adds something meaningful and specific to your topic. Many students add sources that don't really say anything. Naturally, you only want to use information that contributes to your piece. In this tutorial, however, we'll focus on spotting authoritative sources. Whether they add something or not to your discussion is up for you to decide. About domain names. As you probably know, anyone can buy any domain name available for purchase. .com means it's a commercial site. .org, organization. .gov, government. .edu, education. .net, network. And blogs are web blogs, many of which are .com sites. Remember, anyone can buy domains. .org site may not be an organization. A site on the Internet is not necessarily credible, so be a detective and look for clues to a site's credibility. We will now investigate a .com site as an example, but the process of detecting clues to a site's credibility applies to any website. I first thought of my topic, solar-powered cars, when I saw Boise Man interviewed on a Boise television station KTVB. According to the report, now filed on the station's website, quote, Jim Weber has not pumped any gas for a year. Naturally, a news site like KTVB.com is relatively authoritative because the station has gatekeepers. That means editors must approve the validity of the facts before the story is published. The news station obviously wants to produce accurate stories because the station must protect its reputation as a reliable news source. However, Articles written for broadcast may be thin. On-air time is brief, and most segments are written as overviews. You'll need much more information than a television news story for your paper. Eventually, you'll need to narrow your topic, and scope out our other awesome tutorials for more about that process. For now, let's explore solar-powered cars as we evaluate websites. Let's go, where else, to Google. The results? The first entry is Wikipedia. And that is often the case with Google searches. Wikipedia is a .org site. Let's take a look at the other entries. Many .com sites offer kits for sale. Remember, .com stands for commercial site. These might be helpful, but keep in mind the motivation to sell to readers. Advertisements may not contain all of the facts. This Google result sounds like a news article. It says, solar power car to hit streets in Taiwan. But the name of the site is treehugger.com. This site could be reliable or not. Let's check it out. This looks like a professional site, but who made it? Who are the gatekeepers? Search for clues. The site is connected to TV and radio. It's at least reputable enough to snag an interview with singer Cheryl Crow. Nationally known companies are comfortable advertising on the site. Even Bill Nye the Science Guy is featured. Who publishes this site? Scroll to the bottom of a home page to find more clues. Discovery Communications, Discovery Channel, TLC, this site is affiliated with Discovery Channel's parent company. Obviously, other information can be found in a website's About page. If the website you're investigating doesn't have an About page with similar information about its writers or publishers, the site could be suspect. On this About page, Discovery Communications claims that Treehugger is the leading media outlet dedicated to driving sustainability mainstream. Then Discovery offers proof by describing its media reach and offering names of clients and other data to back its claims. This looks like a relatively credible website. Many sites, however, are not authoritative, and not all of their sources are credible either. For example, if you're researching a topic of the Fair Tax, you might assume that the Fair Tax Foundation found at fairtax.net sounds credible. Maybe, however, if its main source is Reefer Madness, maybe this site is not completely credible. That is an unreliable source, and the entire site could be unreliable. The sources on a site are questionable. 
If you can't determine who wrote or who published the site, you can identify an author, but you can't tell if the site is a personal page without gatekeepers, meaning credible editors who approve the validity of the facts, or if it looks like a professional site, but something makes you question its credibility, your website detector is on. Your doubts are probably accurate, and it's time to search for a more reliable source to enhance your paper. Finally, many blogs or weblogs are dot-com sites, but that doesn't necessarily make them credible sources for your paper. Blogs can be corporate sites, like this one from Tesla Motors, that features an entry about electric cars and solar cells. There can be group blogs, personal blogs, and everything in between. Although we could spend much time covering what makes a credible blog, for now remember to search for signs of credibility. Final tips? Anyone can write a website, including a blog. A lot of traffic on the site doesn't mean accuracy. Look for clues pointing toward the credibility of the writer. Who is the writer? What is the writer's authority? What are the writer's biases and motivations? Look closely for answers and you'll detect a website's ethos or lack thereof. In this tutorial, we covered how to spot authoritative sites and how to spot less authoritative sites. Have fun evaluating websites and good luck with your project.